Hi and welcome to Lois and Morgana Davidson Art. It's Lois here and today I'm going to be using my imagination to paint an atmospheric flock of crows. So I'm creating this moody sky and the look of fields, woodland paths, hedgerows and downland using the wet in wet method. I'm using five colours, so it's a limited palette painting and those colours would be raw sienna, burnt sienna, burnt umber, indigo, lavender blue um, and I should be using some ordinary table salt and I'm using a plastic card for etching but you can of course also etch with a palette knife or with your fingernail through the damp paint. The brushes that I'm using um, today are um, from left to right a Cotman one stroke three quarter inch or 90 millimeter flat brush a small pro art sword liner and um, a synthetic Princeton Aqua Elite one and a half inch mottler brush. And I will put a list of my materials in the comments below. I'm using Saunders Waterford cold pressed paper, 11 inches by 15 inches or 28 centimeters by 38 centimeters. It's taped to my board with ordinary decorator's masking tape and today my board is at a very slight incline. It's only about 20 degrees maximum um, because I don't want the water to flow too much down the page today. So I'm going to use my large wash brush, um, any large wash brush uh, will do, to wet the page all over. And I've got in mind that I want quite a low horizon line, a big sky, because my flock of crows are the most important thing for me today. So I'm going to wet my page all over, make sure it's nice and wet, and then I'm going to, rather than using soft washes, I'm going to pick up fresh tube consistency paint onto my damp brush. Um, the, the five colours that I listed at the beginning of the video, just all on the brush at the same time without mixing them in. And the idea is that I want to get a sort of a spontaneous tree line on the wet paper with paint that's thick enough not to run too much so that it will naturally colour blend on the page but sort of hold its own and stay in place across that low horizon line. Um, using the corner and tip of this large wash brush just to get these shapes across, just trying to get the impression of a tree line. Um, and now I've washed off my brush and I've dipped it into a little bit more of my paint so I don't have too much and I'm creating my wet in wet sky, being careful not to bring the wet in wet sky down to contact the tree line. I'm keeping it away from the tree line but sort of bringing it down really close um, so that it sort of loses strength, so the paint loses strength and lightens up um, so the trees kind of stand out and this moody cloudy sky above should hopefully soften and diffuse as it dries and just give me the nice backdrop for my flock of crows. So taking my three quarter inch flat brush, um, clean and damp, um, I'm just straightening up um, the base of my tree line. And now I'm going to dip my wash brush again into all the colours and sweep them across the page at a shallow diagonal and then scrub in a little bit of dark across the base for a something and nothing foreground and then hope that all of the paint will just gently diffuse, um, softening off underneath that tree line again and hoping that things will gently diffuse and the wet in wet will work its magic on these beautiful colours and hopefully just give me an interesting landscape. Um, and now I'm just going to strengthen up my trees and just put in a few looser canopies, a little bit higher than the tree line, and then taking the corner of my plastic store card, which is quite sharp, I'm etching through the paint 
the wet paint, the damp paint, um, and it's giving me the impression of tree trunks and trees in the distance really easily. Um, this does damage the paper, it sort of leaves a permanent scratch, so if you'd rather not do this, wait until your painting is dry and then use a rigger brush or a lining brush, anything with a really fine point, and then paint in your branches and your trees at the end but I kind of like the spontaneous effect that this gives me, and you can use a palette knife for this, of course. Um, I find that scraping them in at this point as well gives me a sort of more natural, fresher look. And then taking the three quarter inch flat brush and scrubbing in a little bit of strong paint over the, um, over the tape, just to give me more of that something and nothing foreground. I'm preparing the paint there to sprinkle some salt into it and also to scrape with the card and to etch in some brambles and grasses, sort of hedgerow plants in the foreground. And all the while I'm working on the foreground, um, you can see that the sky has been softening back and lightening up and it's really turned out into a really nice atmospheric sky and I think it's really going to suit the flock of crows. I've just decided to, just before it dries, to quickly etch through this little um, individual tree here um, just to bring a bit of light to that area. And then finally just a sprinkle of my ordinary table salt I'm not using much today, just a, a, a tiny amount sprinkled across the foreground. I'm just looking to get some texture and effects. If you're sprinkling salt, if you put it in when the paint's too wet, it won't have any effect or it might just make a mess. If you put it in when it's too dry, it also won't work. So the paint has to be just damp, almost dry. And this is how the salt looks after about five or ten minutes. And I'm hoping that it won't go much further than that. These effects are really pretty and exactly what I was looking for. The salt has more or less painted the foreground for me. So that's the main part of the painting completely finished, painted wet in wet. I need to leave it alone, walk away, let it dry completely and come back and finish off the painting. And here it is, um, it's dried back really nicely, the sky's atmospheric, um, the tree line is also atmospheric and brooding. Um, I think my, I've got a lovely run back in the foreground, which I think is a little bit distracting, even though I like it a lot. I think it draws the eye too much. So I'm mixing up a little bit of brown and lavender, and I'm just going to neutralise that area a little bit, um, just to um, draw the attention away from it. And now I'm going to paint my flock of crows and I'm going to use my small pro art sword liner uh, because it's got a lovely fine point and I should be able to get a good amount of these little birds painted in quickly and loosely and hopefully the effect will be um, that of a flock of birds either leaving the trees or about to land in the trees. And I'm holding the brush um, quite far down at the handle um, and allowing the brush tip to make these little marks that just suggest the birds. I'm trying to position them fairly randomly, um, or seemingly randomly, but I'm trying to position them so that the composition uh, remains balanced as well. Some of them are just even, just little dots really, as, as well as others that have got a more sort of overt wing shape. And so I think I'm done. If we look a little bit closer, I'm hoping you can see that um, the birds are in scale with the trees. Uh, they work well against the lighter and darker, more sort of atmospheric parts of the sky and there's enough variety in the shape and suggestion of birds there to actually create quite a, a convincing illusion of this flock of crows. So that's the painting finished. Um, I'll remove the tape and just have a look at it with a clean white border. 
um, that helps us to see it almost as if it was framed so that we can see if everything does balance out, if it does all work and if we need to make any minor adjustments then we can at this stage. And here it is, the finished painting. I'm quite happy with it for a really quick, loose, experimental painting. Um, I think the sky works really well and it's a great backdrop for these crows. Um, and if we look in closer, you can see the soft diffusions of colours. There's some nice granulation from some of the colours in the sky, but we've still kept enough light behind the trees for the trees themselves to stand out really nicely. Um, the shapes of the trees are sort of in keeping with the landscape, but slightly uneven and wild looking. And of course, the salt and the etching with the card has given us some lovely marks in the foreground, um, just to suggest the detail that we don't really want to have to overtly paint. So I hope that was um, helpful to you if you're thinking about creating similar scenes um, and learning to paint wet in wet. Um, it can be a little bit of a tricky process to start with, but with practice, you can find it's a very rewarding way of learning to understand how paint, paper and water react on the page. And painting scenes like these sort of freely without any pressure can be a great way to build your confidence so that you discover different effects and different ways of doing things. And then when you come to paint a more planned painting, either plein air or um, from your own photographs, etc., um, then you will be confident about the kinds of effects and marks that you can make with your watercolour paint, your water and your brushes. Thank you so much for watching and for supporting us here on YouTube. Uh, please think about subscribing. It's free to do and it really helps with our reach with the YouTube algorithm. And thank you so much to everyone that supports us on Patreon. We really appreciate you. Um, the channel would not be possible without you. So I'll see you again soon and happy painting. Bye.